you doing? I'm Craig Jackson. And I'm Jared Friesen, and this is Channel One for Friday, March 4th. It's the never-ending winter for the East Coast. Snow, sleet, and ice have hit once again, making this latest storm number 15. So we now is in New York with the story. Craig, I'm standing on a rooftop in New York City, and it is freezing. New York's not alone. It's like this for a lot of the East Coast. People living in the Northeast found that bundled up was the best way to be Thursday. With blowing snow and temperatures below freezing, this latest winter storm held the East Coast from New England as far south as North Carolina in a firm grip. The storm is blamed for this, a plane hanging over a dike at New York's LaGuardia Airport. The plane skidded off the runway during a snowstorm. 35 people were injured. I asked meteorologist Bill Evans why the East Coast has experienced so many storms this winter. And it's all set up by a pattern of the jet stream, which is a ribbon of air that guides weather systems around the United States. What has happened is the jet stream has been in a big U-shape all winter long. And when it's in a big U-shape, it picks up storms in the Northwest, it drops them across like Southern Arizona, drives them across Texas, the Gulf states. And when they're in the Gulf of Mexico, they pick up a ton of moisture out of the Gulf and really, really become intense. Then they work their way straight up the coast in that U-shape of the jet stream. And here's a note that might make some Easterners jealous. While they've been going through winter storm number 15, people in at least six states have been experiencing record warm temperatures. Craig? Well, Serena, you know spring arrives in less than three weeks, so that might bring warmer temperatures for the East Coast. So try and stay warm, okay? Okay. All right, Jerry. Well, coming up, U.S. culture goes overseas to France. But the French are waging a strong fight against it. Who will win the cultural war? Next on Channel One. The it's every player's dream to go to the World Cup. To get there takes determination and years of hard work unless you enter Snickers brand world-class welcome essay contest. Then you can get there in 250 words or less. Just write how you would personally welcome the World Cup soccer players to the United States. You could be one of 24 grand prize winners to receive an all-expense-paid trip to a World Cup game where you'll lead the teams onto the field. It's our chance to walk out on the field together in front of the world. Kick him over to me. Kick him over to me, Pele. He took one stolen car, two wrong turns, ah! and a beautiful hostage. You kidnapped me with a candy bar? Makes a handy weapon. Time to stop those little yuppie crooks, man! What the Charlie Sheen, Christy Swanson, getting there is twice the fun, the chase. This could actually work. Rated PG-13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. This week we've been looking at how U.S. culture has become dominant around the world and whether that gives the U.S. power over the rest of the world. Tracy's got the story on a country that's trying to fight U.S. cultural influence. Jared, a hundred years ago when countries like Britain had empires, military might helped hold them together. Now people in some countries like France feel like they're being forced into a kind of new U.S. empire that Americans are using not weapons but music, food, and movies to convince or even force them to be just like us. Just walking around Paris, I could see that American culture seems to be spreading rapidly in France, especially among young people. Hagen Dash here, right, right, right there. McDonald's. Yeah. In response, the government of France has been passing laws to restrict the spread of U.S. culture on French soil. There are limits on how much American television and music can be broadcast. Extra taxes are levied on American movies. Can a country that has a population of more than 50 million people, thermonuclear weapons, one of the largest economies in the world, really be scared of Fred Flintstone? So do you think France is becoming more American? I think France is at the point where it already is, extremely American, uh, much to the chagrin of the French. When I walk down the Champs-Élysées, I'm seeing Demolition Man, McDonald's, Burger King, a Levi's store, mm -hmm. a Disney store. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. French officials say American culture is spreading because we have more money to push our products, even if people don't want them. Yes, for example, in, in uh, the field of music, we know that uh, the French people prefer uh, the French music. <laughs> you, like, you like American music? Yep. Yeah. We? Oui? Yeah. More than French music? Yeah. 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 
So this long line has nothing to do with French culture. This is a line waiting for NKOTV, or New Kids on the Block. <laughs> French filmmakers say the economic power of Hollywood has already driven Italian and German films out of business. And now they say the same thing might happen to the French film industry. Look out! If they, if they choose to, do no. we have any reason why... But, why? Because, but I repeat to you that the people in France, when they have, they have the possibility to choose, they choose a French or a European film. French officials French. get upset when you suggest that French people might like American movies. But currently, American movies account for 60% of all tickets sold in France. Despite what French officials say, there seems to be something about American culture that makes it more appealing to young people than French culture is. Well, let's talk about different types. What's the difference between French culture and American culture? It's difficult to speak in, in, in so, 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 so. Well, for what we call culture, uh, in the States, uh, you, you have two words, uh, the word art and the word entertainment. And uh, you have uh, a lot of things which are entertainment and uh, that uh, we don't call cul culture. The French say culture is supposed to be good for you, to make you a better person. The American culture sold in France, they say, is only about entertainment. Is that what American culture is all about? Fun? I mean, is that what we're bringing to you guys? Yeah, yeah. Fun? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah? And what's French culture about? Uh, well, serious. No. <laughs> French kids use words like serious and dull to describe French culture. It's too much. This is probably a good example of what the French government would like us to watch. It's people sitting around discussing some sort of an issue. <laughs> this is an example of what people want to watch. This is Highway to Heaven, I think, in French. Despite the fact that we see almost no French TV shows, on French TV you can watch American music videos, NBA action, lots of soap operas, and more. French officials say most of the American culture exported to France is not good enough to be called true culture. Is it that American entertainment makes people stupid? Makes people think less? Is that part of the danger here? Uh, in fact, uh, it's our analysis. Yes? French officials say that American culture will make French kids dumb, as dumb, they say, as American kids are. Wow. <laughs> if it's so junky, why do people watch it? Why? A drug or something? I don't know. They just watch it. Julie says she likes to watch American TV because it kills time and you don't have to think. But it doesn't seem to have held back her intellectual development. She goes to an advanced school and speaks several languages. Julie's parents say American culture doesn't make her dumber, it makes her less French. Are you as French as your parents? No. Why not? I don't know. It's just that... Why not? Maybe that's what's worrying the French government. As kids become more American and less French, French society is losing control over them. In the end, we found that this culture war is about a lot more than just culture. It's about control and who has power. And if America wins this war, and it looks like we will, then what will the world be like? So Tracy, what will the world be like if the U.S. wins this cultural war? Well, Jared, there are a lot of different opinions on that. Business people already know the financial impact, that exporting U.S. culture means big profits for U.S. companies, and it's also pretty good for the U.S. economy. But no one's figured out the social impact of U.S. culture on other countries in the long run, so we'll just have to keep watching. All right, thanks, Tracy. Sure. Greg, you're up. All right, well, now it's time for your level three pop quiz. The National Weather Service has kept accurate weather records nationwide for over half a century. But this country's first weatherman started keeping detailed records long before that. So your question, whom does the National Weather Service credit as our first weatherman? Is it A, Thomas Edison, B, Benjamin Franklin, C, Thomas Jefferson, or could it be D, Daniel Fahrenheit? Have your answer when we come back. I got a Michael Jordan MVP cup, a Michael Stavert burger from McDonald's. He's bound to let me play one-on-one. -on -one. Hurry into McDonald's today for Michael's favorite extra value meal, the Double Big Mac. And for 39 cents more, supersize it or any extra value meal for more fries and more drink. And get an MVP collector cup free. Charles, you sitting here. 
So what do you say? Justice wants. What you want is what you get. To my dear friend Charles. At McDonald's today. Hey, check it out. It's Cindy and Paul. You mean Paul, the pimple king? Oh, oh man, nice thing to say about your friend. Oh, really? Hey, I like Paul. I just hope he's ordering some Clearasil now. No one's going to tell you to your face you need Clearasil. Such strong medicine. Only Clearasil guarantees fewer pimples in just five days. Paul? Hey, you want to join us? Paul, oh, it's good. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? Hey, hey, Clearasil. Fewer pimples in five days, your money back guaranteed. Here's your answer. According to the National Weather Service, who's our first weatherman? C, our third president, Thomas Jefferson. Others, such as George Washington and Ben Franklin, kept weather records. But Mr. Jefferson is credited as the first to use scientific instruments, buying his first thermometer during the time he wrote the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson kept daily records from 1776 through 1816, and he collected weather records from different parts of the country, providing the model for the National Weather Service that was established about a century later. And one final note, because this week marks the fourth anniversary of Channel One, we want to tell you that we really appreciate the opportunity you've given us to bring you the news. To teachers, we want you to know we will continue to support your efforts in every way possible to give your students the highest quality education. And to students, we appreciate the privilege of being part of your education. And thanks for watching. Four years? Yeah, when Channel One started, you just started getting stubble on your chin, bro. <laughs> I'm just playing. Y'all take care. All right, see you later. It's all good. Boys and girls, from Friday at five to Sunday closing time.